Uh, just give us an indication My of pleasure. how much the pandemic and the associated global lockdowns has really affected your business in this part of the world. Well, we have a pretty broad-based business in Asia-Pacific. We have seven countries um, that we operate in. 66,000 people are on the ground. We serve about 300 million meals a year across a spectrum of sectors. As you'll understand, you know, we've seen a, a, a breadth of effect, uh, both in terms of countries, some countries are just really at early stages of dealing with COVID-19. Others, like China, are emerging. Uh, China's a, a good example of where we're seeing recovery. In China, we have 4,000 people on the ground. We serve 35 million meals a year at 200 sites. Our clients there are mainly corporate and industrials. And we have 95% of our corporate sites back operating again with 75% of people back. Uh, what's interesting is, is those sort of narrow numbers are mirrored by uh, McDonald's and KFC, for example, who have 95% of their stores open. And in some cases, they're at 96% of pre-COVID sales. Uh, Apple and Starbucks have 90% of their stores open, in some cases with limited service. Um, and I think what's encouraging the last week was that there are reports in March of resurgence in automobile sales in China. So. Right now, um, whilst there will be some setbacks, with the, Ch the Chinese government has put in a strong consumer stimulus and Australia has actively aided food, food logistics to Asia, I'm pretty confident this trend will continue. So we're preparing really for the bounce and taking the opportunity to strengthen our business and relationships in China uh, based on what we've learned through the crisis and we've learned a lot. Um, and I think Australian business should be looking to do the same. Mark, is there almost a, an opportunity to start afresh when it comes to entry into the Chinese market? And is there sort of an early bird advantage here in terms of getting in while the reopening and the economic rebound is, is still on foot? How confident are you that that rebound will result in more opportunities for Australian companies? Well, I think that for Australian companies, there's an unprecedented opportunity right now. Um, if you take a sector that I'm familiar with, food, for example, I mean, Asia, as we all know, is the epicenter of economic growth. It's on our doorstep. Um, by 2025, half the world's economic output will be in the region. But I think what's most important for Australian companies is there's a large and growing middle class. You know, by 2030, 60% of the world's middle class will be in Asia. Um, and 88 of the next 100 middle class consumers are being bought in the region. Um, and I think it, what's true to say is, is consumers in Asia are no strangers to food, health and security scares. Uh, as a result, they have a critical focus on quality and transparency in their food system. And that's a great opportunity for my business, but also for other producers and marketers of food that's clean and green with provenance. I mean, even before COVID-19, there, there was a growing focus on health in China. Uh, there was uh, an unprecedented level of, of gym openings. And I think that this can only serve to create an even greater demand for quality um, food systems and, you know, quality food that's clean and green. And Australia has a high potential to be able to produce that. And the Asia Task Force that I, that I chair is convened between the Business Council of Australia and Asian Society. And our focus is very much on ensuring that Australia seizes this opportunity and gets more than its fair share in all key sectors. And as you say, we're right on the doorstep. There is going to be a realignment, I think, um, geopolitically and in terms of traditional trading relationships. And Australia has a great opportunity to really seize that as China and the region in general um, comes out of COVID-19. Coming out of COVID-19, are you positioning for a change in the industry? Because we continue to hear that potentially we could see fundamental changes in consumer behaviour given the ongoing social distancing measures. So I think the answer to that is, is yes, you have to adapt. Um, and I actually think that I'm very optimistic about our business in the region. And whilst this has been a terrible experience for everybody, I think it's made us much more adaptive as a business and much more innovative. I've been massively impressed by the innovation that our people have demonstrated. Uh, and quite frankly, that's why I'm optimistic about our potential for coming out of it. I mean, we've been encouraged to do things that we've never been done before and even faster. As you say, for example, social distancing, it's accelerated our use of contactless payment, uh, which obviously is a great reassurance for consumers. 
in some cases, we've adapted our business model to be able to serve food that's you know prepackaged um, and allows consumers to really eat within a social distancing framework. But but much more fundamentally, it's encouraged us to to move into service areas and partnerships that we've never done before. I mean, to give you two examples, we're working right. very closely with the government in India right now. Um, when Modi locked down India for the first 21 mm. days, which of course was a really key move, there was a whole group of migrant workers who were unable to secure food in that lockdown right. situation. In three days, our business repurposed our central production kitchens and put up a program whereby we're feeding 100,000 migrant workers a day.